Uh, my career at Rangers, everything wasn't going according to plan, it just wasn't going so smoothly. And he always used to have a wee quiet word and he's saying, you know, just keep working away, the goals will come. And such is the respect the, the, the respect I have for the man. When I did break his record, typical Mr McPhail, who's the first guy there with outstretched hands saying congratulations. And it meant an awful lot to me in that record. It'll take some beating. I would never sit here and say I'll never be beaten. Because Mr McPhail probably thought for many years that his record wouldn't be beaten. So I would never say that. But it'll take, it'll, it will take some beating because it's an awful lot of goals. And I'm proud of every one of them. Back in the race for the championship, Rangers' dominance was under threat. Celtic were neck and neck when Rangers travelled to meet Wraith Rovers in Kirkcaldy. They were soon 1-0 down and struggling to find an equaliser. It was the perfect scenario for you-know-who. We were really tall in the league one year, running up to Wraith Rovers. I think you get two in the last two minutes. And that sort of set us on a, wee, now, a, a run till the end of the season. If we didn't drop points then, I think Celtic would that gap up on us, and uh, that would be the end of the nine in a row. Gascoigne's corner. Up goes Petrich, and McCauley's The equaliser for Rangers. Seven minutes from the end. Still the pressure's on. Gascoigne again with a corner. Get his at full stretch. this moment, I just remember after scoring one of the goals, Archie, the gaffer, the 12 years dancing up and down outside the dugout. I used to ex expand most of my energy running towards the dugout, he said, celebrate more than anything. Because we had to win that game, and we were under the cosh, and those goals were really, really vital. I wouldn't sit here and say they were the goals that won the championship, but they might just have been really important. Well, they certainly were really important. The title was finally won in the sun at Ibrox when Paul Gascoigne provided a remarkable performance. It's been very evenly balanced. Here's Gascoigne now, pushing forward. So great determination! Oh, he's done it again! 2 0 up on Aberdeen, Rangers were then awarded a penalty. If Gaza scored, it would mean a hat trick and the championship. And he looked at me. He's, he's, he's big eyes, one of these big St. Bernards, right? Because I take the penalties. And I went, don't even ask, you're not getting it, right? <laughs> he went, and he looked, he's like, please, please. I went, all right then. So he so stuck in, well done. <laughs> <laughs> but I couldn't, he just couldn't grudge him to a hat trick. I was, it was fantastic. Eight in a row had been a vital season for Rangers, but the next was the one thousands of fans had been waiting 22 years for. The squad were under immense pressure to win their ninth consecutive title. Had we not done it, we'd have been forever known, no matter how good we were in winning eight, we would always have been known as a team that never made nine, never equaled Celtic's record. And that's how important it was for us to win nine in a row. Ali's determination to make it nine in a row was obvious when in just the second game of the championship, he scored yet another hat-trick. Here's Charlie Miller, looking for McCoyst. 3-1 to Rangers. And here's McCoyst for his hat-trick. Magnificent finishing. The group that were there that were, had been Rangers supporters since they were young, um, you know, we're, we're desperate for that. I knew that everybody at the club was, was desperate to get that. You know, like Sally, people within the dressing room, we were making sure that it just wasn't an ordinary league championship, it was one that we had to go and win.
away from the championship race, Rangers had also reached the final of the Coca-Cola Cup. It was to be an explosive match in more ways than one. Lodra, away from Richie. McCoist. 1-0 to Rangers. McCoist does it again. McCoist wants the ball played long. Delivered as requested. Great save by Roussey. Did he lay extremely well, McCoist? Goes Petrich, chance on there for Moore, is played in by McCoist! The second for Rangers! But feelings were running high in the Rangers team as Hearts fought back. The flashpoint came as Paul Gascoigne mounted another attack. I went and made a run in behind, and he played it to where I was. What happens? And he went, next time I come through, he says, be a wall, stand up for me and be a wall. And give me a one-two. I went, okay, you know, I went in behind, I no problem. So next time she goes, I don't need to tell you, stand up. And he plays the ball in behind, right? So when he realises I don't run behind, he gives it one of them. Ah, so I ran after him, I said, right, young. I said, you throw those hands up again, right, in front of the crowd, make me look an idiot. I said, I'm going to leather you, right? He goes, oh yeah, I love some of that, he says, right? Even by half-time, the two players had not resolved their differences, and it was left to Walter Smith to restore order. But we're still arguing. Boys are trying to split us up. I see the gaffer coming in, right? Who's a man not to be messed with, by the way, that when he loses it. So he comes in and he starts, right, you two, sit down. So I can see a look in his eyes, so I sit down. So the guy's going, still having some. And I thought, you beauty, watch this. So Walter grabs him, didn't he? So I thought Walter was going to kill him. He pins him up. Right, pins Gasco and says, look, when I say, tell you to sit down, you sit down. And next minute, it was like something to Tom and Jerry, he just comes down the seat and they got all the way into the seat like that, right? He was just sitting, he was just sitting there, sung the seat. And I thought, well, what, you know, I knew, having been with Walter when I was 17, I knew he went to have a laugh, have a wee joke, you know, have a go, have a dig at him. But I also knew, more importantly, when he... I think Gaz got a fright that Clasty had attacked him in a manner he had done um, at half time and uh, in the second half um, he turned in um, a tremendous performance and uh, he got two goals in the second half of the game. So we have to thank Clasty for his motivational part. Well, can Hearts come back again? Here's Gaz going once more. That victory meant a record ninth League Cup medal for Ali McCoist, more than any other Rangers player. And of course, a success which quickly restored the traditional camaraderie in the dressing room. By this stage in Ali's career, most people thought that there were no records left to be beaten, but one still remained. Gordon Wallace's total of 264 league goals. It would soon join all the others which had fallen to McCoist's astonishing appetite for goals. Queuing up in the centre. It really had to come. Came from McCoist. Gascoigne still in possession. The race to achieve nine in a row was reaching its climax. Rangers had beaten Celtic every time they had met that season, but the crucial game was at Tannadice in May. If Rangers beat Dundee United, the championship would be theirs. Miller's cross is a good one, that hits Loudrup! <laughs> it's a classic from Loudrup! I mean, the whole thing would be that, wouldn't it? What's in that? Charlie Miller cross with his left foot. Huh? It was, it, was, it was crazy, but um, I was delighted uh, the fact that uh, all that hard work that year, all that nervous tension, all the nervous energy had come, and it was fitting that, that Brian Lowdrop scored that goal. 
one of, if not the greatest thing about that team.